Welcome back to another one of my videos. Over the past few years, I've had countless viewers ask me if I can recommend a good handheld or benchtop oscilloscope at a very reasonable price. So in today's video, I'm going to show you a really nice, ultra-compact, dual-channel oscilloscope that's ideal for students, electronics hobbyists, technicians, as well as automotive technicians. This particular model you see right here is highly rated and for the price using the coupon code shown in the video description area there's no longer a reason not to own one. I'll also be placing links in the video description area for the single channel model which is a little lower in price than this one and the four channel unit which is slightly higher priced than this model. Just like other products shown on my channel your purchase will help support my work on electronics and more. Okay, let me show you this unit. And this is what you get inside the box when you receive it. You get the oscilloscope, which is extremely small. Look at it in relation to my hand. It can fit in your shirt pocket. And it only measures about 3 eighths of an inch or 10 millimeters in thickness, 4 inches long or 100 millimeters, and 2 and a quarter inches wide or 55 millimeters. So it is super compact. The entire housing is made out of aluminum, an aluminum alloy. Over here is channel A, channel B. And the good thing about this unit, it also has a built-in signal generator. The color liquid crystal display is 320 by 240, and it has capacitive touch on the right side over here. This unit, as I said earlier, is a two-channel unit. Bandwidth is 1 megahertz, and the sample rate is 10 times that amount. Analog input impedance is 1 megaohm, and it has 5 different trigger modes. You'll see each one of those later. And along with those modes, you also have rising or falling edge triggering. Expected runtime of this unit is around 3.5 to 4 hours once fully charged. Now the signal generator that's built into this unit, which I'll demonstrate shortly, will produce a 10 hertz to 1 megahertz square wave duty adjustable or a 10 hertz to 20 kilohertz sine wave, square wave, triangle or sawtooth wave. This unit also has the ability to store what you're looking at on the screen. You can take a screenshot, you can save the waveform that you're looking at so you can go back later to take a look. The battery inside this unit is a 550 milliamp hour lithium polymer and you can see right here in this image, I took the back cover off using the hex key right over here in this package. And if you have to do any firmware upgrades to this unit, it's very simple using the virtual USB disk inside the unit. Okay, so over here you got this little instruction manual it comes with. Now I'm going to post a link to the instructions for this unit in the video description area because it does not include the instructions, which is kind of crazy but they are available online. Over here, you see the probe tips and the cap, USB cable, there's your probe. Now this one is only a times one probe. If you'd like a times 10 probe for higher voltages, which I'll show you in a minute, you're going to have to order that separately. The times 10 probe is not included. You do get the signal generator wires right here, plugs right into the unit, and you have your output. Okay, for the demonstration, I have one of the probes connected in, channel A, and over here on the bottom jack, this is your output from the signal generator. To power up the unit, it's on this side right over here. Push and hold, and this is where you charge. Now I'm going to zoom in, give you a closer look to show you all the features. Okay, I'm going to try my best to show you everything on here. It's not going to be easy because the oscilloscope is so small and it has the glossy surface on it. So I have to hold it at the right angle, otherwise you can have glare. And I can't get too close with my camera, otherwise it becomes blurry. So hopefully you can see right now everything that's here, and I'll point everything out. Over here is your battery. This is the volts per division, 5 volts for this line right here. You notice it says A, below that it says B, channel B, which is right over here. 
it's not plugged in so I have it turned off and way down here it says C and what C is it's math between the two you could A plus B A minus B with the waveforms then it will display that waveform down here up here is where B would show up if there was a voltage right here like that one but it's off purple goes to that C combination of the two waves up here is 5 milliseconds of the triggering 5 milliseconds per division and 5 volts per division trigger it's got a little line moving upward and to the right that means it's going to trigger on a rising edge if it was a falling edge which you can adjust you'd see the line go from the top triangle pointing down and then to the right that would be a falling edge there are many different settings it says auto right here let me push this button on top quick all right and now it says stop auto so you can stop that and if you have a waveform show up and you want to save it for a later comparison you can push this button on the top right hold it down and it will save a screenshot of the waveform you can go back later and take a look at it down here is your voltage readout for the waveform you could do peak to peak you could do RMS minimum maximum there's a lot of different settings over here frequency duty you could change these around as you wish and this is another time measurement right over here now when you touch the S button right here you can see it says page three options but before we go to three you slide your finger left and right in the area of the S to scroll through the pages so page one two you can go back that way so we're going to go to page one oscilloscope and then it says channel A so you use the up and down arrows like this with your finger or you can just touch in that area too once you're in position to select that you're going to touch the M and you can see it's 100 volts per division you can change it by left and right that's 0.2 volts all the way up to 100 all right let's leave it at 5 now we're going to scroll down right here position you could change see that the waveform up and down and leave it at 100 where it should be right there you can move down again AC or DC leave it on AC for now and over here you can enable or disable probe times 10 or times 1 hit that exit out now you want to go to channel B right there 2 volts per division and we're going to touch M same settings previously mentioned you can turn it on by going to enable and now you see the yellow line and you can see the voltage show up so you have a waveform here that's one channel and that's your other channel let's move down to channel C hit M and it says math A plus B it could be A minus B and there's a whole bunch of different settings right here let me just leave it on A plus B and we're going to go down here to post is the way you want to set it up you can change the position of it let's move it down to enable whoop let me go back up hit M there it is so that's a combination A plus B showing up down here so we're going to take this now touch that disable and exit out time base whoop time base right here you can change it that's 10 milliseconds 20 milliseconds I keep going that's one millisecond it goes all the way down to microseconds one microsecond all right fifty and right there so now I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to here let me go up to A let's turn off that waveform I don't need it alright so you saw that so now we're going to go over here time base trigger hit M all kinds of triggering mode you have auto normal single trigger scan alright so there's a bunch of those let's leave it on auto 
and other settings available right here. Let's exit out. Cursors. You can adjust the orientation of all the cursors right here. Very simple. Using this setting, change these values around. Over here it says X. You can see it's a reference line, so let's go down to X. All right, and right here you can see it's off. If I turn it on, scroll down, you can see that red line showed up. And it's gone. Now we're going to slide over again to page two. And here's where you can set all the different things. Let's go over to this now. Frequency, select that. So channel A, it's set for frequency. So over here you can see frequency. You could change that. If you don't want that to be frequency, hit the M, scroll down. And now it's going to become duty. All right, so you can change all the different settings, RMS. You put that back to, that's voltage peak to peak. So let's put it back to frequency, all right? There's duty, there's RMS, hit M. It's set for channel A. I could choose channel B if I want. Go back to A. Voltage peak to peak, which one is this? Channel A, peak to peak, and channel B. There's your battery voltage, 3.95 volts. Now we're going to slide over one more time to page 3, File Manager. This is when you save screenshots. You can go save them, or you could load them back up to take a look. And here's your waveform output. You could choose square wave, sine wave, triangle wave, sawtooth. Back to the square wave. Let's leave it on sine because I'm going to show you that in a minute. And you could also adjust the duty on the other waves, the square wave. Let's scroll down again. System settings. You can adjust the volume, the backlight, standby, powers, a whole bunch of settings right here to adjust. Calibration, if you want to calibrate the unit, choose that. All right, product info. And down here is about. And that is it. Now I'm going to take the output from the signal generator, connect it up to the tip right here. I could leave this on, or there's the tip I was talking about earlier. This slides out, there's replacement tips. So let me connect this up. Okay, so now we're looking at the output here. Let's go to waveform options. Whoop. M. All right, so right now we're on sine wave 1 kilohertz. You can see the frequency, 1 kilohertz at the bottom. So now let's get rid of that screen. And we want to scroll left and right. That changes the time. So if you just scroll left and right like this, nothing going on, you went too far, go back to the left now. There you go, look at that. All right, so now you want to do voltage up and down like this. And just keep going like this. And now we're going to change the time again. And you see how nice that works. And it's triggering on the rising edge. So now let me do this. Let's go over here. Let's try the waveform option. Let's make that a triangle. All right. Sawtooth. Square wave. Now let's take a look at the duty. You ready? There you go. See it staying on longer now? That's 90%. It's 10% only. And there you go. And there's your sine wave again. Let me disconnect the signal generator. And that's it. Here's the back of it. Now I want to show you one other thing, or actually a couple of things that you may want to get to go with this. Right here is the probe we use with the scope that came with the scope. And this one here is the one that I purchased that has the times 10 setting for use with higher voltages. I'll post a link in the video description area. There it is, times 1, times 10. Good idea to have both. And then you'll have two wires, one for each channel. And this one here, let me take the tip off. In 
inside the package you have the spare tips I showed you earlier and right here like that okay there's one other thing I want to show you which is extremely useful if you're going to be using the scope for automotive purposes so let me show you what that is okay what you're looking at right here are probes for probing the back of a wire harness like you see right here you have wire harnesses and connectors on your engine and you want to leave the component connected when you test it so what you do you take one of these has a needle and you can insert it just like that into the connector when it's inserted into the connector you could take a banana jack connector or the wire from your digital meter, an extra one, goes in very easily like that. And then you could take the opposite end right here and connect that to the oscilloscope. You can also probe a wire by placing it inside the cap, like you see right there, and then inserting the needle all the way. All right, just keep pushing it in. And right now, you can see it pierced that wire, and you can connect right here and take a reading. Extremely useful, and these are also a must-have. A link has been placed in the video description area. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.